My name is Jim Moran. I'm your Queen Anne's County at-large commissioner, and I'm here today with Paul Gunther, former commissioner, Smokey Ziegler with the town of Centerville, commissioner, and Charlie Rhodes from Church Hill. We're here today to talk to you and give you some facts about a proposed straw poll on voting by district and voting uh, staggered terms. And I'm going to allow Smokey Ziegler to, and, and Charlie Rhodes to, to bring you up to speed on what those two items are about. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm Smokey Ziegler. I'm the president of the Council of Government. Charlie Rhodes is on the committee. It's a group of municipalities in the North County. It was brought to our attention about nine months ago an interest in looking at a straw vote to accomplish a couple things. And thanks to Representative Steve Ahrens, who introduced Bill 1344, which says, and I'll just read this because it's easy, requiring the specific questions be placed on the ballot in Queen Anne's County at the November general election of 2016 to determine the sense of the voters of the county on issues of the method of electing the members of the Board of Commissioners and staggered terms for the members of the Board of County Commissioners providing for the carrying out of the straw ballot. And that's what we want to emphasize from the Council of Government, is the straw ballot. We want people to be able to have the choice to decide which way they want to recommend moving forward on these two action items. As the COG, we unanimously supported this. Several prior commissioners, as Mr. Gunther is here, and prior commissioner Philip Dumanel, who would, would like to have been here, but he's recovering from knee surgery, so he couldn't make it. But this is the second time this has come up. Once in November 17, 2014, for an actual vote by the commissioners when Philip Dumanel was the president. And now this time as another straw vote to put it in front of the people so that they get a choice on how they are governed and making their votes count. John? Yes, it's not the first time uh, that we've uh, discussed this issue. As a matter of fact, there was a straw poll vote on the 2000 presidential ballot, which um, passed overwhelmingly in Queen Anne's County, which resulted in then county commissioners um, changing the method as uh, we elected or how we elected commissioners. Um, it created geographic districts, and um, it, we went from three commissioners at the time, three county commissioners at the time, to uh, five county commissioners. Um, as we've moved forward, this is an evolution, if you will, of that um, initiative back then. And since then, we've heard from uh, numerous constituents, I have in particular, and my two town commissioners up Churchill, in regards to how we currently elect county commissioners. Uh, the suggestion has been that we uh, um, look at voting by district and staggering the terms. Uh, so that way, we, um, uh, by staggered terms, we would not lose the historical knowledge. We don't lose all five commissioners at one time. Um, the, uh, the main issue is right now is to get this question on the ballot for this presidential election so the citizens can express their opinion on how uh, they'd like to see the uh, Queen Anne's County government move forward as uh, in the way they're governed. Okay. It, it, if I could just, absolutely. Uh, what I'd like to do is just real quick, read both of the questions so that everybody knows what they are. Maryland Election Law Article Section 7102, Local Courtesy Bill, regarding a straw poll for the following. 1. A. Election by district. Currently, each of the four commissioners must reside in one of the county commission districts, but are elected by an at-large vote of the entire county. The fifth commissioner may reside anywhere in the county and is also elected at large. We request legislative authority to elect four commissioners solely by the voters of the four commission districts. B. Staggered terms. We request authority to provide for staggered terms for the five county commissioners, two to be elected at the presidential election, and three elected at the time of the gubernatorial election. Here again, this is what the straw vote will be that we're asking to be placed on the ballot. This is HB 1344. And, that, and this bill is not, uh, it's not legislation. This is just to get the opinion from the citizens of Queen Anne's County. We want to know what you think about this. And, and this is this is why we're doing this. And, and again, you will still be electing two commissioners. You'll be electing the at-large and your district. You'll still have those two votes. And again, we're looking for your opinion. And uh, Commissioner uh, Gunther here is going to speak a little bit on on what the benefits are to doing this. Well, there's actually a lot of benefits. First of all, from the staggered terms, 
when a group of commissioners is in there, they're out always helping and, and looking for grant money and new programs that may be coming along. And they may not be able to get those, those tasks completed during a four-year term. So if you elect all new commissioners, then the momentum for some of these grants may be dropped and, and thus the county would lose out. Secondly, the, uh, um, the fact that currently you have commissioners that are in office that didn't win the popular vote within their district. So consequently, those people within the district really don't have a say in what's going on. Their votes went for actually for almost nothing. And, and it's very important that you uh, that this representation uh, take place. The fact that uh, uh, the population is, is certainly staggered across the county, uh, but uh, Queen Anne's County is such a diversified uh, county. The northern end, uh, and, and a lot of people don't realize it, that, that the northern end of the county represents Maryland's largest agricultural block of land and uh, accounts for the largest production of corn, wheat, soybeans, in the state of Maryland, bringing in over a hundred million dollars a year to the to the uh, uh, to the county, and yet very very few times have we had many uh, much agricultural representation uh, on the board. Uh, and as as the time goes on, uh, the cost of becoming a commissioner has been just uh, 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 extravagant. I mean, even when I was running, there was there was a commissioner candidate spent spent over a hundred thousand dollars for a, a $19,000 a year job. And that's only grown over the last two elections. And you know we need to uh, allow these pe the people within the districts to have a say of who, who's representing them and elect people that they know, that they've worked with, that know their district as well. And, and, and to that point, I think that uh, uh, some of the issues that you're gonna hear, and again, uh, what we are looking for is just the opinion of the voters of Queen Anne's County. Uh, if, if the voters want to leave it the way it is, we're fine with that. If the voters want to change it, we're fine with that also. But we think this is an important issue and we think this is an issue that should be settled by the voters, not by the sitting commissioners, by the voters. And you know, you're, you're going to hear a lot about, for instance, well, if, if we go to staggered terms, every, there's going to be an election every year. That's not true. You have an election during your, your, the, the governor's election, you'll have two or three commissioners elected. And in the presidential election, you'll have two or three, however it is done, will be elected. And it, you, you, I've heard things like we're going to see signs everywhere. It's going to be a constant, constant campaigning. If we vote by district, only in that district will you see those campaign signs. you got to remember, I, I think that one of the things that has that is, is concerned me is the fact that times are changing. When, when you have, and I hate to say that, a, a lot of affluent people living in Queen Anne's County, that can afford to spend over a hundred thousand dollars on an election, you're stopping all your everyday your, your teachers. You can't have a teacher as, as a commissioner. You can't have a, a fireman as a commissioner. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm just saying to compete with that kind of money, it's it's next to impossible. What this does, it kind of levels the playing field. So now, if you want to spend a hundred thousand dollars in a district, go ahead. I know for one, I could walk a district. I could walk a district and meet every person in that district. And, and also, I think that it's important that if, if you are elected, who knows you better than your district? If you cannot win your own district, what does that say about the voters? What does that say about the, the, uh, the individuals running for that office? People that know you the best are your next door neighbors. And if they don't support you, I, I don't think that's really uh, a good representation of Queen Anne's County when your glossy flyers are what is what getting you into office versus the people that know you the mo the best. So, so these are some of the things that that uh, are, are disturbing, and we want we want to hear from the Queen Anne's County voters. That's why we've asked for this straw poll, and that's why you know I want to again thank Delegate Aarons for bringing this up because I think this is a, is, is a critical thing moving forward in Queen Anne's County on how we elect our commissioners. Uh, anybody want to add anything else to Just, that? The, the bill comes to the floor on March 9th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Please call Senator Hershey's office, call Delegate Aaron's office, express your support in favor of HB 1344. If you have the time, show up to testify. Be there an hour before 1 o'clock to sign up. Express your support for the things that you can affect change in Queen Anne's County. Why let special, special interest groups dictate how you are going to be managed by your commissioners. 
you want to cast your vote. You, the people, are the ones that are important. You, the people, are the ones who will drive this decision. Please make it happen. And again, again we, are, we are looking for the input from the, from the citizens of Queen Anne's County. Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of talk about, well, we're a small county. It's 50,000 people. Why can't I vote for every commissioner? Well, we do that right now. But we are a very diverse county when it comes to, like Paul said, farmers up to the north, uh, the commuters on Kent Island. There's a lot of differences in, in Queen Anne's County, and I think that that, that difference is that those cultures, that, that lifestyle needs to be expressed as your commissioners. And, you know, people talk, well, you know, then, then what's going to happen when I want to build a school in this district? That district's not going to care about it. Anne Arundel County votes by district. When you vote by district, everybody has to work with everybody. And, and, and it causes, I actually think, better government because you get more continuity. And, and instead of a block of, of people getting elected and running their agenda and, and not really looking forward to looking to serve the whole county, they're only to get their agenda through. So this is, this is what this is about. And again, we are just asking for the opportunity to put that on the ballot and for the opportunity for the citizens of Queen Anne's County to weigh in. I think I think you've got to, the, the bottom line here is that you've got to ask yourself, why would anybody be opposed to allowing the citizens to voice their opinion? That's all it is, is, is giving you the opportunity to say, yes, I want this, or no, I don't want this. That's all this bill is asking for. And I think that's the question that you've got to keep running over in your mind, is why would people be against this? Why would they not want to at least let people speak their mind have a chance to uh, to vote on the on the topic. If it's voted down, fine. If it's voted up, then we go forward. Mm -hmm. And just to that note, I'd, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Uh, myself and Commissioner Jack Wilson both sent letters of support to Delegate Arents uh, for this bill. So that, you know, I want to I want to give Jack Wilson. You know, he's again he's interested in hearing what the what the voters have to say about this issue. Good, Charlie. Sandy? Well, again, uh, just to echo what everybody else has said, <coughs> obviously it's a very important issue. Um, and to, uh, again, reiterate, it's a non-binding mm -hmm. straw poll. All it is is an opportunity for the voters of Queen Anne's County to express their opinions on these two questions regarding how we move forward in elect electing our county government, our county commissioners, into the future. Um, and as um, Councilman Sigler has said, um, please, uh, if you can, come and testify on March the 9th at 1 p.m. It's uh, going to be heard at the House of Delegates Ways and Means Committee. And if you can't make it, please con reach out and contact Senator Steve Hershey and uh, Delegate Steve Arendt, who I give a lot of credit for standing up and uh, seeing the, uh, the need for this and providing the opportunity for the citizens of Queen Anne's County to speak to this very important issue. Well, I, I want to guess we'll, we'll just close with that. I want to thank everybody for coming. And again, you know, I'm going to say one last time, we are looking for input from the citizens of Queen Anne's County, no matter which way it falls. If you like the way the system is, we're fine with that. If you want to see change, we want to hear from you. Thanks a lot and have a great day.